Hey everyone, welcome to Retaliatory Strike. Today we have a game between myself, Ryan, playing Circle of Ouroboros, and Bob playing some Kador. Hi everyone, I'm Bob. So I'm playing Kador in <laughs> Warriors of the Old Faith. So it's going to be Kador led by a Menoth Warcaster. Because I like what Resnick 2 brings to the table. So I've got Resnick with two destroyers. Because I think a destroyer with battle on it is pretty cool. Shoots you a lot harder. And I got to use the uh, the two vassals to empower it. So it's, Resnick never has to give them focus really until I'm ready to use them for melee. We've got a Juggernaut because Juggernaut with battle is terrifying. We have Scourge of Heresy because I really like the bond. And Purgation on the sword is real neat. And we have a War Dog to make Resnick a little harder to hit with melee. We've got the High Paladin Dark Vilmon to be a nice little shield guard for me. Uh, a Manhunter, the Paladin, and uh, and Yuri, uh, Yuri the Axe. So I've got lots of good combat solos out there. We got our mechanics, obviously, just for pick, patching up Jax and Resnick, because uh, he's repairable, which is cool. We've got the Choir. We've got uh, a minimum unit of Cossack Woodsmen to ambush in to keep me scenario relevant, because I don't have a super high model count army. And we've got the Ulans. I think the Ulans with the Vengeance spell on them is pretty deadly. That's about her. Hey everyone, I'm Ryan. Today I am playing Balder 1 in Bones of Ouroboros. This is a 75 point list. So for Balder's battle group, I have a Walled Guardian, a Walled White, two Walled Wardens, three Walled Watchers, two Walled Weirds, and a Druid Wilder. For solos, I have three black clad stone shapers and a gallows grove. And then for units, I have two sentry stones and mannequins and two units of shipping stones. So this is kind of my like original list when I first got it into uh, Circle where, and I got into Circle because I was watching Lord of the Rings and the Ents attacked uh, Isengard. And I was like, that's cool as hell. I wish there was like, a tree faction in War Machine, and then I saw the Walt or Circle, and that's what <laughs> made me buy into them pretty much. So uh, this is, yeah, it's a fun list. There's actually quite a bit of decent boostable shooting in the list. All and, magical. And, and it's all magical, <laughs> so Resnick's uh, thing of not getting shot <sighs> doesn't work. <laughs> but, uh, and and yeah, it's a, it's a pretty fun list, a little bit battle group heavy but that's the kind of lists i like so deployment so we rolled off and bob won the roll off and didn't even have to use his theme benefit of a reroll to win and he chose to go first and i picked side and i picked my side because the forest is more on his side and i wanted to hopefully catch him with a, a teleporting balder next to his caster and then beat him to death so that was why i picked that side and then uh, Bob's deployment here. Yeah, so I was just thinking, I have Caverly, they're fast, I'll go first. Forgetting that, like, with all his uh, half your army advanced deploys, <laughs> so I wind up easily running into your threat ranges. Um, <laughs> so that was kind of pointless for me, really, but uh, it made sense at the time when I, when, I, when, I, when I picked it. So I just put the cav up there, because I want to threaten his objective with my cav. I'm thinking as soon as it becomes vulnerable, I charge him and smash it up. That's kind of my, my game plan. Let us flank the jacks. They can do lots of shooting. Put rest of it middle. Control everything. Nothing, nothing too crazy there. I do have the theme benefit also of um, additional attack die on impact attacks. So it's pretty helpful to let the cav go where they want if they need to knock down some screening troops. And then you're just putting all your support in behind yeah, there. My masses of support <laughs> going behind and not used to all the support. <laughs> yeah, used to mechanics, and that's about it. So all of a sudden, there's a ton of other models. <clears throat> and then I have some advanced deploy and some ambushing Cossites, and that's about her. So for my deployment, I'm putting Balder right up the middle, and I'm going with uh, the Guardian and the Walled White on either side of them. I figured those are my two shield guards, so if I need to, or I'm getting shot up real good, I want them near... Balder. I put the Wardens on each side and then the Weirds flanking each side and then my Stone Shapers in behind and then the rest is advanced deploy. So the the, um, 
Bone Shrine is my rack, <laughs> which I don't want to actually use in this game, but <laughs> it's there. I need to fill a point. Uh, Yuri and the Manhunter want to hang out around the woods to leverage their tree walker ability to threaten through it, or maybe to be in it in a better defense against melee. Uh, for mine, I'm setting up the shifting stone so then my guardian can run up and then get teleported forward and get surprisingly deep. Sit, and then I can do the same trick with one of the ward, uh, wardens. And then I have a shifting or er, sentry stone on either side. And then I place my uh, watchers kind of just along the front line there. Kador, turn one. All right. So, I got my power-ups out, looking at what I want to do. I did forget how deep his army is up when everything's advanced to boys. <laughs> Makes my turn one not look so pretty. So, I start running some guys up. I think I'm going to put the Vengeance spell on the Ulans. Unpresent a couple of them to be shot at. And then hopefully I get crazy deep. And I put up Lamentation. I'm a little bit afraid of the Wild Weirds. But I'm thinking maybe I can make Lamentation matter for, like, a turn? <laughs> that's, that's what I'm thinking. So as it puts those two spells, camps three, walks up seven, repos three forward. So that's kind of fun. I like that he has repo natively, so there's no reason to cast spells and charge all goofy. You could just walk and repo and get as far as you would have charged. So then I'm running my guys up. I'm leaving the front rank in walk and spray range of those... Uh, Splinter Boys there, the Sentry Stone. Uh, so I've got the front three guys are in threat range, but I'm thinking being armor 19 against his POW 10 spray, they should be okay. I'm hoping they maybe hurt one and then give my guys all vengeance. Yeah, I just run all my support up in behind. Nothing too crazy. Even uh, my Paladin and Darton run up. That's my turn. Circle, turn one. All right, so a little bit less of just running up for me, but I'm going to start with running the Guardian up and then remembering that I have to give out Fury to my Sentry Stone. So I roll up, get three on the top one, one on the bottom one, which is great because the top one's the one that's in range of Ulan. So I move them up so all three of them can take shots at Ulan's. They are wrapped four, so I just try hard rolling it, miss. And then I boost and hit and boost damage and I crank them real hard. So I kill one of them <laughs> at least. And then the third one just tries hard rolling it again and misses. And then I just shift the sentry stone a little bit. I move up the bottom sentry stone, staying in the cloud so he has stealth at least. And then running up the mannequins so they can be obnoxious for next turn. I then walk up my top Walled Watcher, I take a shot at that one Ulan, and I boost and boost, and I end up killing them. And there should be a forest there, which might have been relevant because their vengeance move wouldn't have had Pathfinder, so then w at least one of them would have been stuck a little bit. Uh, but other than that, I just run up my bottom Walled Weird. So Balder get lets the, his stuff run and power attack for free. So I, that's why I'm not putting out Fury on to them when they run. And I move, and I had moved up a Warden so then he can be teleported if I want. And then I'm running up the second Warden. And then I put the top Weird in the trench. I walk up Balder, put up Stone Skin on the Walled Guardian. And I put up uh, Solid Ground on Balder. And then he's camping too. I move up both of my walled watchers and put up stone form, so they're armor 21. And then I teleport my guardian forward just, just behind that wall, so he threatens pretty much the rest of the zone. And then I'm just running my support up in behind. Kador, turn two. Hockey. So when the Ulans died, it did give Righteous Vengeance to Darton and his paladin buddy. So they have a little vengeance move to do in a second here. I take a few minutes looking at threat ranges on the weirds to decide if I can keep up Lamentation or not. And turns out I would have to back up Resnick into the kill box to get out of 
the range of them. And at rate of fire three, having purgation, I don't want to take that many shots. Uh, so I wind up deciding to not upkeep Lamentation. And the vengeance move on the Ulans. Because the way it works is you can take their vengeance moves that happens in the maintenance phase, and then when you come to uh, when you control, where you choose if you're going to upkeep or not, you can choose to drop the spell. So that's what I wind up doing with them, too. You also ambushed in the Cossacks. Mm, and I ambushed in the Cossacks, which you can just see a couple of little hats at the bottom left corner of the screen. I do all my little vengeance moves, then I decide about the upkeeps, where I go, you know what, I don't need any of these anymore, really. So I drop them. Really wish I could have kept up Lamentation, but there's just no way to do it without getting shot by Weirds a lot. <laughs> and Ryan shot by weird, with Weirds a lot before, and I didn't like it. So, uh, my Ulans, I'm thinking I want to try to get on that Sentry Stone on the top of the screen. I'm hoping to get there. I want ideally to deliver two, but I do wind up only being able to squeeze one in. Maybe if I was smarter in position, I could have got the second one. Uh, for allocations, I don't think I actually allocate anything. None of my, I do give one to Scourge because I'm not sure if I can if I want to run him somewhere, and I want to try to keep one on him for Arcane Vortex. So I do give a focus to Scourge. And yeah, I'm counting on empowers on my destroyers to give them the chance to boost attack and damage roll, and that's about it. So here we are using laser. We're lining up where I can launch my. Ulans, because I'm really, really, really wanting to get in on that uh, Sentry Stone, because those things are a real pain in the butt. So this guy's going in, he impacts on a dude. Rolling three dice to hit isn't too hard to get the hit, crushes a little stick man. So he gets in on the Sentry Stone. Then I'm plotting out where the next one's going to go, and I realize I don't really have a good landing spot to try to squeeze a, another attack on the Sentry Stone. So he comes in, impacts his way through, uh, and they get on the walled white. No, the Watcher, the, the little guy. The yeah, the Watcher. Watcher. So here I do a little damage to the Watcher, we do some damage to the Sentry Stone, but don't kill it, because I didn't roll super hot, and as I think I'm dice off two, and it is eight health, so I need to roll a ten on three dice to kill it, and I did not. So it survives on like two boxes. I do some repo action. Now, I repo one guy back, and I repo the two deeper in. And later, I was like, I guess I could have repo them back, too. I don't know if having them engaging you was any good to me, but it didn't really matter. Uh, I do have my vassal go up and empower. I have my choir go up and give battle to all the jacks. I'm really liking having buffs on Kator jacks. That feels real good. <laughs> Looking to see what Yuri can do. Yuri charges that wall weird and thresher, so he hits the weird and the watcher. They're all named W names. I, think that's <laughs> I do amazing damage to the weird. I crush it real hard. And there it is right there. That's a lot. He almost kills it, which is shocking. But uh, he, I think it chips maybe a little damage into the little guy. But it doesn't really matter. I decide to launch the other Manhunter at the Wild Watcher. And I was debating if I wanted to try to hide him behind the forest, launch it later to be to another potential contesting piece later on in the game. Maybe I should have held him in reserve. But I got excited about hitting stuff, so I just launch him. <laughs> and chips a little more damage in, which isn't too bad. I have the other Vassal and Power of Bomb Destroyers. Now, everything's battled. The Destroyers have their extra focus on for boosting. Things are looking okay. I just got to figure where I want to sink these shots in now. I'm deciding, because there's an armor buff on that old Guardian... I'm going to start softening it up, but I want Rez to put Spell Piercer so he doesn't get his armor buff. So Rez goes up just in range of 8, so he curses the um, Walled Guardian. Uh, so, it's, so it gives all my battle group plus 2 to hit it. And then he repos back, casts oh, cast Spell Piercer, repos back. Life is good. So now the, the Walled Guardian is cursed, so my guys are even more accurate against it. So I'm effectively a rat 6, which is nice. So I'm cranking my shot. I hit him. He's not massively hard to hit even behind the wall. Defense 9, so he went yeah. up to 13. <laughs> Your defense 9 down to 8? With uh, stone skin? Yeah. Uh, no, stone skin is minus 1 speed. Oh, not defense. Still, defense 9 isn't crazy. 
So yeah, we crank a shot into him, do a little bit of damage. We try another one, I think we do a little bit. Oh, this oh. one, I'm sh you shield guard it to the white, who takes a pretty nasty hit. But it did keep me from softening up the Guardian even worse. So, not too bad for you. I run up some mechanics a little bit, why not? I move some, uh, I move Darton up and go into Stone and Mortar stance and range the shield guard for Resnick. I move the other Paladin up and go into Stone and Mortar stance atop my top zone. Uh, here's my Cossites. So, they're gonna try to figure how many I can squeeze in charging on the Sentry Stone because their power 8, it's armor 18, we dice off 10. We're, we're hoping for some good rolls here. <laughs> but I play Cossites a lot, and they have a rep for being pretty bad, and most games they don't do awesome. But by God, if you give them enough chances to be a hero, sometimes they'll be awesome. And uh, this turns out to be one of those times. They spike some damage rolls pretty good, and they all it takes all three of them, but by God, the last one, they, they kill that center stone. So that feels real good. So I feel real justified in bringing him in the list. <laughs> Circle, turn... All right, so I uh, leech in my theory there. I'm back up to six. I get to I drop stone skin on the guardian and I keep upkeep the solid ground. And here I am placing a mannequin so then he can get a spray on the two oolons. And then I am rolling up my. Fury on the Sentry Stones, and I get three again, so that one's producing tons of Fury, it's awesome. <laughs> uh, after that, I am going with the Mannequin, and I'm boosting to hit. I hit, and I boost damage, and I think I leave the one on one box, and then I just hard roll the other one, because I got to aim this time, so it wasn't as bad. I hit, and I boosted damage, and I think I left them on two boxes, so the Oolons are pretty hurt there, and then I shift my stone over to be behind a bunch of stuff, so hopefully he gets to live a little bit longer. After that, I am gonna go with my Guardian. I'm looking, and I, he the only model that he has in the center zone is Yuri the Axe, so all I have to do is clear him out. So I charge in with my Guardian, and I kill Yuri. I'm boosting to hit, and then with my next initial, I boost to hit the Manhunter and crush him. Good. So now I have cleared the center zone, so I'm gonna score there at least. And then here I'm looking and there's a really nice line of Cossites there for my Stone Shaper to just spray all over. So I'm going with my Walt Weird. I'm wanting to try to kill that objective as well. And then here is where I remember that I have a theme benefit that heals my stuff. So I heal the, the body because my mind and body was out on the Walt White. So it's not ones to hit. So I just heal the body and don't worry about it. And then I ended up missing one of my shots, hitting the other two, and I'm boosting them, and I leave it on eight boxes right now. Here I'm trying to see if I can get plus two strength out onto my walled watcher. I'm thinking of just sending them into the objective to kill that and get me that extra point. <clears throat> uh, but instead, I just put up the strength buff onto the one walled watcher up there who starts punching Ulan. So he's hitting, he needs sixes to hit, and then I'm boosting damage into them. Uh, for the most part, that one I didn't because I also wanted to put up stone form with him. And he managed to kill both, both of the Ulans, so that was great. And then I go with my walled weird who is shooting at the one Ulan there and I'm hitting but not doing any damage even with boosting. <laughs> so my dice cooled off a little bit on that one and now I have to try to figure out a plan to, to finish him off because I don't want to leave an Ulan looking at my back lines there. So I decided to go with the other walled watcher up there who can see him because he's a huge base, or large base. I boost to hit and boost damage and I end up taking him off and turn him into a forest. And here I just 
figure out the, where my shaper needs to stand, move them there, and I try hitting them. I'm needing sevens, and I roll a bunch of sixes, and I, I end up killing one of them out of the four, so... <laughs> lucky for me. Yeah, le lucky for Bob there. And then I use the st shifting stones to teleport my warden forward, who then uh, I'm boosting to hit, and I crush the two Cossites that he could get to. And then I geomancy at another one, Earth Spikes. Or I geomancy at the objective, because it's dice off five, and I end up leaping doing four points of damage to it so now it's uh it's prepped for next turn to be destroyed and score a point there now i am looking i'm tr wanting to try to kill the one paladin up top there so i walk the warden over and i geomancy and earth spikes at him boost to hit i hit and then I boost damage and I leave them alive on a couple boxes. But that's the way it goes sometimes. <laughs> After that, I am trying to decide what to do with Balder. He's pretty much the only model I have left to do. So he walks forward. He is going to feet here. So then his stuff can't get to me and then I have cover and everything. And then he is arcing. So my original plan was to put up a forest so then he couldn't even be seen by most of the stuff there. But then I earth spikes at uh, Resnick and he arcane vortexes it off Scourge. And then, he, and then I do it again because I wasn't thinking and now I don't have enough focus to put up their fury to put up the forest. But my feet means that he shouldn't be able to reach me, hopefully, so... And then I take my last Walled Watcher over, and I punch a Kossite and kill him. Kador, turn three. Okay, I have a lot of troops that have been turned into forests. That's not ideal. I'm... I gotta resolve my continuous effects, because Resnick and... I think our main just Resnick right now has the acid on him. Yeah, so this, this turn is just resonant for me. And my up, upkeeps, I don't really have any out. Allocations, my vengeance moves, all that good stuff. Oh, there we're just looking to see where my control range is because mm. he would uh, wouldn't have Pathfinder. So. Yeah. So I'm here I'm trying to plot out if Resnick can reach anything or like if I could uh, use the bond to slingshot uh, Scourge of Heresy up into Balch's face or something like that. And I'm looking at it, and I realized I, the, my, the way my arcs are, I'm not... I might have been able to get there, I think, if I could have put Balance Charge on Scourge and then had Resnick go kill something with Melee. But it's tough to try to find a spot where I could do that and not get in Scourge's way. And... <laughs> Well, and also, you also would, you I would have had to charge right. because you have to kill him with melee to get the movement, yeah. and you can, you're not currently seeing him, so you can't charge, kill something, and then put it out. So yeah, and I'm looking there. My juggernaut is just in range to reach the um, walled guardian, so I'm making a plan for that because look, if I want to give him a boundless charge, he gets a free charge off too, and we're plotting out where I need to stand for battle to go off and if I can make it. And yes, turns out we can get battle on him, which is great. So that needs to happen. So I full load him because I know I can launch him at the World Guardian. I've abandoned any plan of trying to hit Baldur because I can't really get on him. So right now my choir is moving up to get battle on my jacks. And... Oh, because I lost my... I did... Oh no, I was trying to see if I, if I, if I lost my vassal or not. I think I still have a vassal on the top who empowered that other guy. The other destroyer. Alright, so this guy moves up and cranks a shot to finish off the wall white, but he misses. And since all ground is up, I can't even scatter a blast on anything, so that's crappy. Right after I do that, I realize I've gone and put that destroyer in Resnick's way, so I can't move over to put Bandle's Charge on the Juggernaut. So he can still reach that old Guardian, but he won't be getting a free charge, which means one less attack he can buy, which could be a problem uh here I, oh yes yeah, so i have the other destroyer shoot and kill the wall of white then i have the paladin charge in 
and kill the Arknode tree, Gallows Grove. So I've done those bits. Now I'm like, well, since I can't get the balance charge off, I might as well charge in my battled juggernaut, do what I can do. So he goes in and uh, does really, really good. Because it turns out a juggernaut with battle is terrifying. <laughs> and to the box, I think, kills yeah. the uh, to the box ends up killing the wall of the guardian. So that would have been a way safer play if I had gotten the free charge, but it did wind up working. I was lucky, not good. <laughs> so now that that part went off, which is awesome for me, I'm trying to figure what to do with Scourge of Heresy, and I can't really do anything good with them. So I decided to just run them generally forward to be in a position to be threatening next turn. But yeah, I can't really do anything good with them. I have checked to make sure I'm out of Baldur. Resnick is out of Baldur's charging threat range. He's out of the teleporting range. And I'm not close enough to the forest, so he can't force step in and, and start swinging on me. So I'm feeling pretty safe with Resnick not getting hit by Baldur at least. Uh, I'm in the tank a little bit because I am i can't reach a whole lot of models very well here. So I run him up in the acid, why not? <laughs> That's all I've got for Scourge. Check him in threat ranges again because I'm still paranoid about um, if Ryan can reach me with Baldur. So we're talking about the different plays we could do. It's like, yeah, it doesn't look like Baldur's able to sword Resnick in the face a bunch, so that's good. And we're checking his control area. We're we're also looking to see if there's a way where, I, because if you have two Wardens, mm -hmm. you can actually Animus to get enough forest for Baldur to be fully in. Or, and we were also looking to see if there's any models that uh, one of my Watchers could fertilize and turn into a forest mm -hmm. for Baldur to forest step into yeah there's some dangers uh my cossites do move up and try some shots at the wild weird but because it's in cover from the feet they need 11s to hit so in hindsight i should have just charged them into melee to do something because their shots did absolutely nothing <laughs> that was a mistake on my part circle turn three all right so i lost my guardian i was kind of hoping that he wouldn't be able to reach him but i'm not overly surprised so i pull in uh, i'm trying to decide which uh beasts to pull theory from because i got a lot on the board right now so uh going through i i know that that warden can see the juggernaut and get to him so i pull all the fury off of him and then i pull some more from other other beasts as well and then I set up uh, another mannequin to be able to spray onto that paladin there. I roll up some fury and I get two, which puts me up to full again, which is great. And I go with the, I, I give the warden plus the plus two strength from the shaper. And then I charge into the juggernaut and I'm hitting and I'm boosting to hit because I have uh, chain attack smite. So I'm gonna smite him back, which I end up doing. So I boost those two, and he's pretty crippled, but his cortex is still up, so I geomancy and earth spikes at him, I hit him, and I cripple his cortex as well, so now he's stuck in the woods and can't do anything, which is great. Yeah, geomancy's real good. <laughs> uh, after that, I charge a watcher in, because I forgot that I set up my mannequins to do that. I probably should have sent him in on Scourge of Heresy instead, but it's the way it goes. So I charge in, I hit, and I boost to hit because I want to make sure that I hit. So he's full up and I can't put up stone form. After that, I give, or I move up the mannequins and then I'm checking to see if I can get to Vilmon there. And we're looking and, I, and it was kind of close where I was and I was like, oh, but I had six inches of movement. So I'll just move them up a little bit more and be comfortably in, might as well. So then I do that, I boost a hit, I hit and I boost damage. And I think I leave them alive on one box or two boxes. I don't even know if you did damage. He's in stone order at number 21. I, I think I did a couple points, in it, but I know your list is spread out amongst cards and your app, so I'm, I'm not sure how you track it. <laughs> uh, here I give plus two strength to the one walled watcher who then charges in the skirt to the scourge. He hits, 
does some decent damage, his dice off nine. And then I look and he's only got seven boxes left, so uh, the stone form's probably not gonna save him, so I just boost damage from my second shot into him. And I've, I've done quite a bit of damage to him now. He's starting to look a little bit ragged. Uh, after that, I am going with the weird. Uh, who is walking in to be in combat with the Cossites, and I end up not killing <laughs> one of them, which is a bit rough. And I'm trying to decide if I want to send that Watcher back to finish him off and score that zone, or if I want to send him in to kill the objective, and I decide the, the zone's going to get cleared next turn for sure. Might as well just score the objective, so I charge him in. A pretty wimpy charge roll, and then the second one I boost damage and finish them off, finish it off. So I score there, which is good. And then here I looking, and Balder can go splash in some acid and get uh, uh, earth spikes off. So uh, he puts up a force so he can't be seen, and then he earth spikes, and I boost a hit, and I manage to hit. So Balder's there with one fury camped and i am scoring that zone now too so that's going good i am just moving rearranging stuff around here so then uh for the follow-up of next turn so i just walk the warden over and then I'm gonna teleport the stones forward, so I wanna get them in the way where they're contesting his zone and in the way of getting his models to move around at least. So I move them. Uh, and then I and then I'm moving these ones up to be in serenity range for my beasts there. Uh, and then that is my turn. Oh, I just run my wild wilder just to hang out with Balder. Kador. Turn four. Okay. So I'm looking at what I've got. I'm a little afraid of how the scenario is going because he's going to be able to score his own and he can keep contesting mine for quite a while. He's got the models to do it. I'm feeling like he's going to score me off the table. And I'm seeing a play where I can use the bond to get Scourge Heresy to go forward into that forest so we can see uh, Balder and then get Battle's Charge to launch into him. So that's the play I'm working on this term. To see if I can just launch Scorch of Heresy into him with a purgation sword. It'd be real nasty to him since he's been up keeping solid ground. Uh, so uh, we see if uh, the acid goes out. It doesn't. It does a point of damage to Scourge and to Resnick. I get the jack to go over. He's been. I gave him a focus from Resnick, which is handy. Then we, oh, then we talk with. He's like, "Do you want to battle your guys?" And I was like, "Oh yeah, that'd be smart. I should do that." <laughs> Uh, so we do try to hash out where to, I gotta go to battle everybody. They only have command six, so I'm finding it challenging if you want one unit to affect Jax on two different sides. <laughs> but I'm able to do it, so we battle everyone, which is great. Everyone except for the knockdown broken Jack. <laughs> yeah, he's uh, he's pretty much out of here. I do crank my one shot into the center stone and finish it off, so that's nice. So I feel good about clearing that out anyways. It wasn't really important for this assassination run, but I just really wanted to kill it. <laughs> Those things drive me nuts every game. So here, I have Resnick put up Boundless Charge on the full loaded Scourge of Heresy. I have Resnick uh, Spear of Stone. Then the Bond goes off, and I lock him up. Relevantly, I'm staying where I don't take the Free Strike yet. Uh, we were talking about later. I was like, I should have taken the Free Strike to see, because I'm just, Scourge of Heresy is a bit banged up, and it could have just as easily crippled me when I take the free strike leaving and then I would have had just failed my activation stuck in the middle of the board so we should have just taken the free strike now and seen what happened but instead I, I, I hold on to that for later <laughs> more suspenseful that way yeah <laughs> I forget that that AOE is a forest and I'm thinking about having this destroyer shoot stuff to override it reminds me that's a forest in the way and you can't see and I'm like oh yeah I guess I should just move him out, out of the way well, you put him back. Yeah, put him back. And uh, I got a try shot at, some, at the little stone guy, maybe? I don't know. It didn't matter, because what I ended up doing now is just launching Scourge of Heresy out, 
where he took a free strike from the Walled Watcher. He did three points of damage towards the one. sword arm. Did it do one? To the one. I thought it did three. But anyways, it almost crippled the sword arm. And we're looking at if the point, if the damage had gone to column two or three, it would have crippled the movement and uh, ended this. As it is, Scorch of Heresy goes and cranks into Balder real hard. He transfers the damage. And then I start buying attacks and just flattened them. Afterthoughts. So you won the game. What are your big takeaways from this game? <laughs> uh, so this game, much like the, the this is only the second time I've played this list, and uh, in both games it made me realize I was leaning way too hard to Resnix and you the non-magical shooting when there's some armies that bring a lot of magical shooting to the table. So I really need to get those initiates to be a bunch of shield guards for me because Rizdik is uh, more vulnerable to shooting than I thought he was going to be. Yeah, because um, your other game was against uh, Sons, Sons of, of the Tempest. So. Yeah, they get shot a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyways, so I learned, I've learned that already in the first two games playing this. Uh, the other one is that I keep losing my cavalry really fast. Apparently I'm real good at getting calf killed. You like, <laughs> you like sending them up in the front line? Yeah, to... then they just die. So I might do a little tinker with my list there. As far as how the actual game went, I thought it was neat. It was an interesting matchup um, where I had some game into you with like Spell Piercer means your armor debuff didn't work so hot. Uh, I was a, I had Lamentation, which could have mattered, except I was afraid to have it because I'd get shot to death. Well, we both have Purgation on the board. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah for the point about your cavalry, I know at first you're like, I'm going to keep them out of being able to be shot, but then two of them would have been on the other side. Like, you can fit all of them on the one mm. side of the wall. So then you're like, I'm going to push them up, so only the front ranks in threat range, and then I just rolled they really get, hard. They got hit a lot harder than I thought they were going to. Yeah, yeah boostable shots are uh, nothing to scoff at. Yeah. yeah. Um, for me, I, my, my plan of Resnick, you forgetting that Balder can just teleport into forest and Resnick, uh, 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 being able to teleport up and just beat Resnick with Balder, but didn't work out this, yeah, this I, game. You've but... touched me with that a few times, so I'm, uh, I'm leery to that trick, so I was watching for it. Uh, I guess the other thing too is the scoring. Like, I went first because I thought my speed would matter, but because you're so with fire advanced deployed, it just meant I was able to get shot at right away. And um, maybe I should have gone second because you were your position to score three points at the as soon as scoring became viable at the two. And maybe I should have gone second to try to not uh, let you score. Yeah, so it, it was unfortunate that your uh, your Cossites were such MVPs and three of them killed a Sentry Stone because I was pretty sure that if you had <laughs> let that Sentry Stone live between the mannequins mm. and and everything else, I could have cleared out those uh, those. Cossites, and then I probably could have still managed to kill the objective and actually score three when I wanted to. Oh, but... <laughs> yeah, like you, you, you were real close to get the scenario win real early in the game. So, yeah. Other than that, I think it was a fun matchup. It was kind of like I, I've played against Resnick where he had where I don't have a bunch of magical shooting, and he also brought um. Madeline Corbeau or whatever that can put up parlay so it's like you so he sits there with one focus on him and he's like you literally can't attack with me with anything except for jacks and mm -hmm. and it's was yeah. very frustrating so it was kind of nice that he couldn't that you that I had actually got to dictate what Resnick did a little bit in this oh game. yeah but I, I was super scared to have I shouldn't be bothered putting up a levitation because I had to lose it right away yeah. you put it up for turn one when I wasn't anywhere near your control area <laughs> So, other than that, I think it was a fairly fun game. It was but... a neat game. I will say playing Kador with more support models is really cool. Yeah, it's weird. K Kador becomes good when he gets <laughs> other when he gets other faction support models and spells that address some of the yeah. big issues, like having magical weapons. <laughs> when Rezik has a spell that says everything gets magic weapons, I go, "Holy crap!" Gremlin swarms, look out! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. That's that's all that it takes to take, make Kador be good is take other faction models. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> other than that, do you have any last parting thoughts? Uh, no, just that it was super fun. Yeah, it was a fun game, and thanks for watching Retaliatory Strike.